Uh, so on that note, um, I think I'm at five minutes, or at least my alarm's just gone off. So um, I'm going to hand over to Duncan Craig, who's the CEO of Survivors Manchester um, and co-founder of the Male Survivors Partnership and the Men and Boys Coalition. Um, thanks, James. Um, really kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> I, was, I was just too busy reading what everybody else was saying. Um, so my name is Duncan Craig. I'm the um, Chief Executive of uh, Survivors Manchester, an organisation supporting boys and men who were affected by sexual abuse, rape and sexual exploitation. Um, in being part of this panel discussion, um, I was asked to think about one clear message or idea that you would like to share to help stop men's violence against women and girls. And I suppose um, that kind of simple request, that simple question, um, feels like it needs to elicit a simple answer, which is stop, stop doing it. But that's about as effective as for anybody um, in their 40s, mid 40s plus, um, as effective as um, when Zamo from Grange Hill said, just say no to drugs, didn't kind of work. I struggle so much with this question. What do we do? And as I think more and more about it, I think it's not an easy answer to say, what do we do about male violence against women and girls? I think you have to dig underneath it. And I think we have to ask, what about male violence? I think that's where it has to start. Because by understanding why males uh, and violence kind of go together so often, we have to effectively unpick that before we then unpick all the other nuances. When the tragic murder of Sarah Everard hit the headlines, I put a tweet out from my organization that said, today we were thinking about Sarah, we were thinking about all of the women and girls that are um, victims of domestic violence, that are victims of violence at the hands of men. And we're gonna say nothing. We're gonna just be quiet for a moment and listen and try to understand because there's a lot of shouting for very, very obvious reasons. I think I'm still listening is, is if in all honesty, because what I'm still hearing is a lot of noise, a lot of shouting, a lot of what about us. And there's also definitely a place for what about, what about boys and men, what about trans people, what about LGBT people, absolutely. I'm definitely not hearing anybody say, only women and girls. So effectively, we don't need to say what about. I think how we then think about women and girls is also vitally important as a society um, in this unpicking of how do we find, how do we solve this problem? And um, I think, first of all, we have to think about how we think of women and girls in society and positions that they take, um, whether that's in business, but also within society. Maybe telling a boy, oh, stop being a girl, is in some way giving us some indication to how we're thinking about women and girls. And in tackling that, maybe that gives us an indication of, in some way, raising everybody to a level of equalness or equality. I think we've got to understand what the silence is. I think we have to understand why women feel silent and are silenced, um, to, to coin Oprah Winfrey's phrase. I think we've also got to work out why men are quiet bystanders. I think about, well, why am I, why, um, why have I been a quiet bystander? And I guess I've been a quiet bystander at times because I'm scared of violence. I'm scared of, as a victim and survivor of sexual violence, I always have that narrative running through my head in the same way as sometimes I'm a bystander with homophobia, I'm a bystander with racism because I'm scared for my own safety. 
because I'm scared of male violence. And that takes me right back to this. Maybe we need to understand men's attitudes. And yes, of course, not all men. Nobody's saying all men. But for me, sometimes being a bystander, I think that makes me part of the problem because I'm certainly not then part of the solution. When I say we need to understand the attitudes, this weekend I was um, um, asked to, to give an interview to the Metro News about my experience as a victim of sexual abuse and, and, and rape. And I was looking at the comments and one comment from somebody from a man said, he isn't even good looking enough to have a real man interested in him. I'm glad he was raped. I'm really interested in that. It's trolling, et cetera, but I'm really interested in what gives that person the ability to, in their mind, make it okay to talk about sexual violence, about violence so flippantly. And that's the problem. That's how we're gonna tackle male violence against women and girls, by looking at the root problem, the flippancy of the subject. Thank you so much for being part of um, um, this discussion to everybody. Thank you to my panel members. It's been extremely enlightening.